God bless you and welcome to another episode of the Bible says this, what say you, Christmas edition. Now I know you've been wondering where's the man, where has he been, has he gone off the air, is he too busy, what's happening, hey wouldn't we want to hear from you, well I'm back. And I want to talk to you today. Now, you know, our scripture is Psalms 33, verse 4, which says, The word of the Lord is right. My friends, listen, I enjoy talking to you about these things that are near and dear on my heart. And look, my goal is not for you to agree with everything that I'm saying, because uh, I don't know why you wouldn't, because I'm telling you the truth. And I'm showing you what the Bible says, but if for nothing else, to just stir a conversation, to get you to thinking, and hopefully to cause you to go and research the scriptures for yourself. Listen, there's nothing like discovering the truth of God uh, where you will know it for yourself. And speaking of God's truth, I want to read something to you. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning at the 8th verse, and we're going to only read just verse 8 through 13, it says, And there were in the same night shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Glory to God. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And check this out. And suddenly, like, bam, presto, whammo, boom. Suddenly there was a, with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts. The skies lit up with a heavenly choir unlike anything that's ever been seen. And they began to sing glory to God in the highest. That is glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth. Goodwill to men toward all men. That is, and peace on men upon whom his favor rests. Now, my question to you is, should this be celebrated? Should this be commemorated? Now, you will not find in the entirety of scripture, one scripture that says, once a year, celebrate the birth of Jesus. Nor will you find one scripture in the canon of scripture that says, never celebrate the birth of Jesus. All right? Now, my, my thinking is, if the uh, coming of God into the world, if the incarnation of Christ should not be celebrated, if God coming in the flesh should not be commemorated, celebrated, remembered, talked about, and enjoyed, then I say we should do away with all celebrations. Your birthday, your mama's birthday, your dad's birthday, your baby's birthday, the birth of our country, uh, President's Day, Columbus Day. Well, you know, there's some people who, who, who have a problem with that, too. Uh, uh, Halloween of all, for, for heaven's sake. And, and, and any other thing that we commemorate, if we are not going to commemorate the greatest act of love ever recorded uh, in human history, where God, Paul says that Christ was in the form of God and thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That is, he did not think that equality with God the Father was something that he had to forcibly take because he always had it. He already had it. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself. He took upon the form of a servant. He, he, he divested and became a human being. The only, the first and only God man. 
When Jesus came to this earth, my friends, he was 100% God and 100% man. By the way, Gary, let me just take a little side here. From time to time, my, my great clergy friends, when you introduce preachers, it has happened to me, uh, we, we, in a sign of respect, we say, we want you to hear this great God man, this great God man. And we sound like we're saying something so deep. Well, let me tell you, it's so deep that we've fallen out of the bottom. God man is a official title. It is a, an official designation. It is a theological term and it refers to only Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only man who walked this earth who was 100% man and at the same time 100% God. So, uh, the question is, should this be celebrated? Should it be commemorated? Now, we can make an argument for not celebrating it uh, based on several things, mainly based on silence, or we could make an argument for celebrating it l just by simply looking at the multitude of feasts, even in the Old Testament, that God did tell uh, Moses, the children of Israel, and others to celebrate, to commemorate. You remember when the, the Passover took place? You remember that? And how the Deaf angel came in and, uh, and all of the people in Goshen, all of the Hebrews who had the blood on their doorposts, uh, the Lord says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And all of these things were a type for what Christ would do when he entered the world on the cross. And they commemorated those things and they celebrated those things. Now, my friends, you already know that I believe that this is the greatest no brainer that I have talked to you about since I've been doing these uh, sessions. Uh, sure. Yes, by all means, we should celebrate the fact that God sent his son and that his son was born of a virgin came into this world and, and died on the cross and was crucified, dead and buried, lived a sinless life, fulfilled all scripture relating to himself, died on the cross, and on the third day, God raised him from the dead. So, I'm going to talk to you today about some things. I'm going to talk to you about the Christmas tree and whether or not we should celebrate the Christmas tree or whether or not the Bible speaks against having a Christmas tree. Uh, I want to talk to you about, you know, you, you've guessed it, Santa Claus, good old Saint Nick. I want to talk to you about him. I want to talk to you not necessarily about the mythological uh, uh, guy who um, in one night, Got to, he gets to every chimney on the earth and drop off toys. And somehow he gets into people's houses who do not have chimneys. <laughs> and he's been given godlike powers. He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. There's that Santa. Then there is this man of God who gave his heart to Jesus Christ at an early age, grew up uh, in the home of his uncle, a priest, became a bishop, became a fearless defender of the faith. His name was, he was actually called St. Nicholas, who defended the deity of Christ and who to help a friend of his exercise a act of generosity that was so great in dropping off bags of gold to save his friend that, that, that his act of charity became the stuff of legend and what the secularists, secularists did is they secularized the act of this great man St. Nicholas, and, and came up with this Santa Claus. But 
Is there any truth? Was there an actual man who lived, who blessed some people and, and made their lives better? Yes, there was. And we're, we're, we're going to talk about him. We're going to talk about the, 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 the Christmas tree and its history. And oh, 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 hey, Gary, I almost forgot this thing about whether or not uh, Jesus Christ uh, was born on December the 25th. And, you know, that was a pagan holiday. And what we did was we Christianized a pagan holiday. Well, I'm going to show you that if, if the historical record is correct, instead of Christians Christianizing a pagan holiday, I'm going to show you that the pagans uh, paganized a Christian holiday for the Christians in South Africa celebrated the birth of Christ some 30 years before Aurelian's edict of the winter solstice. So we'll, I'll show you where we were celebrating, the Christians were celebrating the birth of Christ long before this winter solstice and, and, and all of this, this crazy stuff, you know. And I, I find it amazing, my friends. I find it amazing when you watch the commercials and you see what's going on today. We don't want to offend anybody by saying Merry Christmas. I got a question. I got a question. Gary Leach is in here with me. I, I, every time I, I almost want to ask Gary, listen, when did uh, Christmas become the new F word? That's what I want to know. When did, when did the phrase Merry Christmas become uh, a term of offense? I'm amazed. I'm amazed at people who say, well, we don't want to say Merry Christmas because we don't want to offend anybody. When my friends, uh, it's Christmas time. Do you not know that the only federally recognized holiday in the month of December is Christmas? Check it out. It's Christmas, and this is Christmas time. And, and since when uh, are people offended uh, uh, at the wonderful phrase, Merry Christmas? And uh, uh, so we're going to talk about that. We want, we want to talk about the, 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 the etymology of the word Christmas. These Christ masters who gathered in Jesus' honor to celebrate his birth and how they rung the bells and the bells were the sound to warn even the darkness that the light has come and that salvation has come to the world and the devil you better flee because one has arrived who is more powerful than you are and he has the power to push back the hands of darkness. John tells us uh, that light, the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehendeth if not. The darkness is not able, Satan's darkness is not able to conquer Christ's light. So I have some things to talk to you about. And I want you to, uh, to spread this, uh, share this, and, and tell, tell your friends, hey, it's time to celebrate Christmas. It's time to celebrate Christ. And no matter how deep of a believer you may be, you're not too deep to celebrate and to commemorate Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the fairest of ten thousands. My God, I feel the Holy Spirit to celebrate his arrival. You know, we, we tend to make Christmas about us and about how much we pay for the gifts and who is on our gift list and the, the food and the celebration and the family gatherings. And I think gift giving, family, food, you can tell I love to eat, Food celebrating is a marvelous thing. But we can't do it to the extent that Jesus Christ is no longer invited to his own birthday party. So we want Christ to be a part of this. And we're going to talk to you about these things. And we're going to study a little history. And uh, hopefully it will free some of you in our next uh, uh, segment as we talk about Christmas, and I want to I wanna wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Tune in for part two of The Bible Says This. What 
save you.